Now back to the Lady Gang. Our guest today is the People's Choice Award winning part of reality TV royalty, but that's not the only crown she wears. A former Miss Alabama competed in the 2018 Miss USA pageant and went on to compete for Colton Underwood's heart on The Bachelor. America fell so in love with her, she became The Bachelorette. Then she fell in love, then she fell out of love, as one does on The Bachelor. But did it stop her? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. She took her megawatt smile and that shiny hair, head of hair all the way to the dance floor, where she won Dancing with the Stars. She recently appeared on Special Forces World's Toughest test and was the last non-athlete standing. Her book, God Bless This Mess, became a New York Times bestseller, and now she's looking to steam up the shelves with her brand new novel. Please welcome to the podcast, Hannah Brown. Hi, y'all. Hello. (laughs) How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about y'all? Did you like your intro? Is it embarrassing? Is it like no, weird it was to actually, hear everything? I was like, wow, that was really awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I love the shiny hair part. Really you have the most beautiful that. hair. I know. It's I, not rem- fair. I specifically remember watching you. And I know Jack's like a massive Bachelor fan. Like I specifically remember watching you being like, that's a great head of hair. Because you don't have extensions, right? This is no, all your hair always. I, I don't have extensions. I sometimes... I feel like you can do so much with your hair when you have extensions where like it is all mine and I'm like so thankful for it. But I'm like, I wonder what it would, what it would look like with just a few, it would, but it would be too much. It would no. be way too much. I, um, I, but yeah, I, it's I all like, mine. I put like a whole head of hair in mine to make it look like yours. So, <laughs> so I recently hosted Miss USA and I thought of you the whole oh. time. I oh thought gosh, of you the you whole great. time. Oh, thank you. But I, when I was backstage after um, and it was like middle of the show. Right. And we were do- doing stuff from backstage. And I saw, I think it was like Miss New York and Miss Rhode Island, who I thought Miss New York was going to win. And uh, Rhode Island had a short little bob haircut. And I was like, Ooh, she took some risks. I love it. I thought she was going to win. And they were like in the back in their like opening number outfit, just like sad and eating donuts. And I was like <laughs> talking to them and I was like, don't worry. I never want anything in my life either. Like it's going to be fine. And I thought of you and I was like, this is just a stepping stone. This, you have no idea what your life would be but take me back sorry to like take you all the way back but take me back to like you competing and you you placed or you did not place and then what you thought did you think it was the end of the world you were like this is all I'll ever do in my life like it's over okay so I genuinely from uh, gosh I don't know what age like probably like high school 10th grade would was like I have to be, I thought it was going to be Miss America because I did the Miss America system, which had the talent because I danced and then ended up winning the Miss USA system while I was like deciding if I wanted or winning Miss Alabama USA while I was deciding if I wanted to actually go back and try for my dream of Miss America because I kept not even placing. I mean, I, I did not place until I won. Like I was a loser. I called myself, I mean, I remember going to my, that last pageant that I, or the last Miss Alabama pageant that I was doing and and that I won being like, well, you know, I guess I'm just like a first place loser. Like I've gotten so good at losing this thing and it sucked because I was like, okay, like this is supposed to be my dream. Like this is how I'm supposed to get like out and this is what's going to propel me and I'm not even placing. And then I won Miss Alabama and then I was like, oh my gosh, I was right. So this, I must <laughs> be winning Miss USA. I, I must it's be winning sign. it. And then I started, I, I can remember vividly, like the day I started getting acne and being like, this is weird. I thought maybe it was because of the makeup that they had used on me at Miss Alabama. And I was like, hmm, okay, like just a little bit. And then my face, I had, I mean, just exploded into craters and cysts everywhere while I'm supposed to be this beauty queen and going for like my dream. And I can remember, like, I spent so much money trying to do everything for my skin. And I would work with all these coaches, which I'm sure you like understood. And they'd be like, well, honey, what are we going to do about your skin? And I'm like, Ugh. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Like it just felt like all my dreams were ending because of 
my face and I got so insecure. Wait, why? Like all of a sudden? I don't know. I just said it was like I turned 23 and then shit hit the fan when it came to my skin. Still don't know what happened. Like what I think it had to be hormones. Yeah. Um and could not get it under control. And so I went into Miss USA and I was really just having to like get through it because I was so embarrassed. I had pictures that I took of <gasps> Honey, myself, like every time no. I would like take my makeup off. Cause you have to like, they're kind of, they're judging the whole time, but the, there are people that do your makeup. So you have to come in sometimes fresh faced. And I was so embarrassed because it was, I mean, it's a beauty pageant yeah. and like, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, what am I going to do? I was in the best shape of my life. I was super small, like felt so confident where that was normally where I didn't feel confident because I, I struggled with my weight and I always kind of have, I think it's all because of just hormones. Like everything in my life is just, I haven't really figured all that out until kind of recently. Um, so like I've gotten, finally gotten to where like I felt confident there and it was in my face and I was like, okay, this just sucks. So no, I did not place, but I, w I won't just blame everything on my skin, but I think it's how I dealt with that. Mm. I, I just felt so defeated and was just trying to like, you know, like when you're saying positive affirmations to yourself, but you're also like, <laughs> I just want to freaking leave this place. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt. So my experience is not what I really thought it was going to be, but it is, I'm, I'm interested to see what you think now, Kelty, kind of seeing that side of it, because it is so intense. Yeah. Like the prep that goes into this. And then, yeah, like after you don't play, like I thought, I thought I would maybe, I hoped I would place at least, but it can be one of the most defeating feelings because you've worked so hard for like all your life. And then you get to like the pinnacle, which is a Miss USA, Miss America, and then it's over. And then you're like, what next? Yeah. It was, it was like very triggering for me because I never won anything in my life. And I was just like, <laughs> I literally was like, girls, it's going to be fine. Because this moment when you lose and you feel so bad is the defining moment that pushes you forward. Because it, it, if you win your whole life, then it's like so easy for you. And you, can, you don't have the gutspa to make it in Hollywood because it's going to be too easy. And then you're going to face rejection and someone's going to be like, we don't like her. We hate her face or whatever it is. And then you're broken. But for us, it's like, good, we're losers. Anything we get is like a cherry on top, you know? Yeah. And so but I think that's what makes you amazing. And I, I love the, the background on that because I was just thinking about you and I was like, it's so intense. It's so crazy. And then it's just like so palpable, the like disappointment, like the second when you, then that anyway. Okay. So, so but I think also it's, it's good for people to know because I have had, some success in these other shows that I've done, but like, so people could think, oh, she wins everything. And people will say that. And I'm like, no, I literally entered like every beauty pageant and <laughs> did not even come in like place for a while. Like I called myself the first place loser because I had gotten so used to losing. And so when these things have happened recently, like I think I'm still just like just as I'm just like shocked and like so thankful, but I'm like, really? Like, are you sure you're not going to take it away? This is not a Steve Harvey moment every time. <laughs> oh my God. I'm called for something. So I want to talk about the book, but first we want to talk about the engagement because yes. we have a brand new bride in the Lady Gang. Jack is four <laughs> weeks married. Yeah. Oh my God. How many Congrats. weeks? Married? I saw some pictures and videos. It looked so beautiful. Uh, oh, thank you. Well, it's funny. I've been watching some of the clips from your podcast that you did with Adam. And it's funny because Jared, my husband, and I also did a podcast like after we got engaged, after our bachelor trip, after the wedding, because I'm like, it's going to be such a good time capsule thing for you guys to have about like exactly how you were feeling to go back on in 50 years and show your kids one day. But I did love, I didn't love, but I resonated with a clip that you guys were talking about the engagement, about how he told you about it before because he was really worried about your mental health and like how you would react to like such a big moment because I had like the, I had a panic attack at my engagement. So oh my gosh, why does that make me feel like I'm not happy for you? But like, I feel like really like it's not just I, me. It was horrible. Me. It was, we all went, 
you could tell the story, Jack. I'll tell you really quick. And then I want to hear about like your experience. So my husband is a musician and he proposed to me at one of their shows on stage in front of like 2000 people because I had like mentioned it to my mom, how it would be funny because we've grew up in music together and that's how we know each other. Um, And then I don't know. Well, number one, I was drunk, but number two, I just felt so stupid and embarrassed afterward. I'm like, everybody is looking at me. Like this isn't how I like wanted it to go. Like, I don't know. I just felt like it was bad. So I had like a full blown panic attack for like two hours afterwards. But I, but I heard you guys talking about like the same kind of a thing. And he was like worried, I think about that maybe happening to you. Well, I did also have a panic attack two nights before. So full fledged when I found out that it was that he was going to propose on Friday, it was such a cluster. (laughs) (laughs) The whole thing. It's so confusing. Um, because it's not that I didn't want it's not that I don't want to get married to him. I think I my mental health during that time was not okay. Yeah. Um, I'd actually, like, I'm pretty open about my mental health. And um, I had switched medications for the first time. And it was just not, not the right fit. But we were still trying to figure out what. So I, I had a whole lot of like medical mental health stuff kind of going on and just started this podcast and there was a, just a lot of personal career stuff going on at one time. And I didn't feel like I was my best self Yeah, and that I could really receive and be fully present in a moment that, you know, we all hope is going to be just like picture perfect and special. And I had one of my breakdowns, which I I had the same uh, meltdown, you know, every two months, I would say sometimes once a month where I'm like, why do you like me? Are you sure you want to be with me? What is love anyway? Yeah. (laughs) I I send my husband the text that's like, do you like me like as a wife or like as a friend or like, (laughs) like how do do you like me? Like as just someone who gets shit done. And he's like, I like you as a wife. I'm like, are you sure? Like, sure. I know you love me, but do you like me? Exactly. You like me? I know you love me, but do you like, like me? Yeah. I, I, and Cause I'm like, there's, I give you a lot of, of, um, just shit. And I, because I give, I'm giving myself shit. It's yeah. mostly him just having to be a part of everything that's going on, like internal in my head. That's just like so scary. And then I'm just stuck there. So I'm like, I'm sorry that you're having to deal with all this. That's how I felt. Yeah. And so then I was just like, why would you want to do this right now? And I don't know if I can handle this right now. Cause I mean, look, I'm from a reality TV show about that was based around dating. And so like, I knew what that was going to bring with like people wanting to know everything and me feeling like I had this certain expectation to be the certain way that I just like, wasn't. And he ended up I he ended up telling me and that he was planning on doing that and then I was mad at him for telling me. Yeah. And of then course. he was like he was like, Well, trying to protect my mental health, but then I'm like, But you told me like basically when you're gonna do it and I don't wanna know. Like that's part of the engagement. You want the surprise. Yeah. So I was like, No. So my, my initial response was, No, no, I'm not doing this. We're not doing this. And <laughs> It was just a really hard week and he ended up not doing it on the day that he told me he was going to do it. He ended, oh. And he truly surprised me and did it the day before. Oh, shit. But then I felt like he didn't hear me. Um, <laughs> uh, I am a, I had to send in a, in an, a text to my, not a text, an email to my therapist, all caps, urgent. <laughs> I need counsel. <laughs> that was the subject. Urgent I need counsel in all caps. I <laughs> love you. Wait, is this I when he proposed you. that you're like no, I need this was like the day that he kind of like felt like he you. was protecting my mental yeah. health because yeah. I had this whole what is love kind of triggered by my parents. I love them, but yeah, thing because we had saw them. And then he that next day like told me we're sitting at dinner, I was like, I have something to tell you. Um and it's like I'm I've been I'm planning on proposing to you and I just want to make sure like you're okay and I'm like why'd you freaking tell me so that night I had the full-on mental breakdown 
me- message, I need urgent, I need counsel in all caps. <laughs> and so I went to therapy the next day and she was like, what's going on? And she's like, is it that you don't want to be with him? What's I'm like, no, it's not that I don't want to be with him. I'm just like, look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Do you, you told me, oh, she had told me, this is what really propelled it. She t- had told me the week before that I should not be making any big life decisions right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, you told me not to make any big life decisions. And this is coming because the of biggest. the state that I'm in. <laughs> and she was like, okay, well, why don't you talk about him? And he said that, talk to him about it. And then, you know, maybe you just let him know, like, you you want this, but right now, like, maybe it's not the time. Mind you, he's planned this whole big thing with everybody there. I don't know. And we were, like, staying somewhere that was, like, pretty expensive. It was, it was a big thing for our whole family to go out there. So he's trying to salvage this. I don't uh. know fully about that. I know that there's other people in my life that know about this. So I'm scared to say anything. So I'm just talking to my therapist. Spiraling. Because I don't want to say anything to my family and friends if they're trying to keep the secret. And I don't want them to tell me any more than I already know. And then he tells me he cancels everything. And I was like, oh, such a relief. I felt better. But I still had to go to therapy the next day because we're still just a shit show. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like he said, he, he called everybody. It's great. I'm feeling just so much better. And we ended up actually, the therapy got pretty intense, but talking about my parents' relationship. Uh So I had like this really intense therapy session. And then we, he had, we had found out early in the week, like that we were supposed to go to this like baby shower thing for our friends who had this like beautiful property that always had these like um, parties there at this pretty barn. And so... He was like, well, I'm going. I know you're having a hard time. If you don't want to go, you don't have to. And I was like, no, I'll go. And so I just threw on some clothes that were like literally dirty in the floor. Like my makeup was from therapy. I'd already cried it all off. And the last thing I said before we got to the place was, I think I need to change. I think I need a new brain and a new brave wavelengths. (laughs) (laughs) Because something's wrong with me. And then I walk in and I realize I even look around and said, oh, this is weird. This is a weird like baby party thing. And that was us getting engaged. Oh, my gosh. So I looked at him. I was like, you're kidding me. (laughs) First thing I say is I'm like, what? But I was so surprised. I was I was shocked. Wait, um, was this the plan the whole time or did no, he actually the have the other plan? And with he the changed family. it. The plan he was to be with the family. It. Oh my and gosh. he switched it to the day before and doing this random baby, like, not lie. shower, but baby like... Baby lie. Yeah, something. I don't even... I don't... It was just a lie about some party that our friends had just recently had a baby so that we were going to see them and they were hosting this little party. And I just believed it because, honestly, he could have had the ring laying out, like, on the kitchen table. And at that point, I would... I was so in my own head I would have never noticed Mm -hmm. like that's how I was at that time and it was beautiful and he was so sweet but I was yeah not that wasn't my like the best of me I guess and that was hard and we like actually the weekend ended up being great I didn't have the pressure of my family like being right there in front of me and then I could kind of talk through it. We had that special time together. So then I could like actually talk about how I feel and how I love him, how it's been, this has been like a really hard time and I I definitely want to marry him. Um, And obviously I said yes, but I had time, a little bit of time to like have that with us and then have that time with my family and friends. And he just like made them a video. They were all like, there thinking they were in this room and they were going to like see us get engaged but he like made this video for them to watch and be like so as you know like things can change Mm -hmm. and um I just want to like show you what I mean and so there was obvious there was like a video of us getting engaged that the people who take the pictures showed them so they were like wait what's happening and then we like came through the door and got to tell them the story so it, it all like worked out um, how do you feel now? How I feel now? So yeah, it took me a, a little bit. Um, I'm really happy that like I'm gonna get to have this life with him, and and I have now the time. I have not started wedding planning or anything yet to just like sit in it. And 
and and be able to not feel this pressure because I think all of it was around just pressure of having to perform and it be the certain way that I just knew I couldn't do. That's how I was. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. And and I think I was like almost mad because as someone who has struggled with trying to make it all work and be perfect and and really like when a moment comes to like be able to fully be there, I I could not do it. Like I physically couldn't. And so I was just wrapped up in that. Mm -hmm. And now I've been I've been able to just there is, even though there are people always asking me, oh, when are you gonna like when's the wedding? Have you started? I'm like, shut up. No. <laughs> well, um, I I'm was engaged. I was engaged for two years before we got married. I didn't start wedding planning for a year. So we and I very, very much recommend that because mm -hmm. it is very nice, especially like I had the same thing. Like there's also this thing, this term that I heard recently called perfect moment syndrome that a lot of people with like anxiety OCD have. And it's exactly what you're describing where it's like, especially for these big moments in our lives, like an engagement or a wedding or whatever you build, you have so much pressure on yourself for it to go a certain way and you build it up in your mind. Like I'm going to feel this way and this is going to happen. And then you're always disappointed no matter what, mm -hmm. because it's never going to happen the way it, that it's supposed to be in your mind. Um, but that's like kind of what I've realized that I have. I had the same thing happen at my wedding. I had the same thing happen at our bachelor parties. Like and that's kind of understanding that is a big thing. Mm -hmm. But then like, I think it's like really smart to just allow yourself to kind of relax, chill the f out after that. And just like, you don't have to get married right away. You can sit in this moment and actually feel great about it as time moves on. And you're like, I'm so happy that he's my fiance. Instead yeah. of being like, let's rush to be my husband. Exactly. That's, that's kind of where I'm at of... I don't know where I want to get married. I don't know what type of wedding I want. And I don't want to feel this pressure that I have to figure it out like right now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to enjoy this time to like go to different weddings to just research like what is the feeling that I want to have where like being able to even see your your wedding, Jack, like see what like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I really kind of, I'm leaning more to destination, but like yeah. really trying to figure out exactly what, I want that to look like and not feel this pressure that it just has to be like, I have to have it figured out, have to have a date, have to know exactly everything that's going to go into that, into the wedding, but like take my time with it. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to do yeah. that. It is on our list to like start finding a wedding planner soon so that we can start having those conversations. But I just, I don't want, I can't deal with any more pressure. And I think you, y'all know, like when you have your, all these different things that you're doing as far as business. And I just started a podcast and there's a lot more that goes into it. than you realize like planning a wedding seems to be like another full-time job. Oh, and I just don't have the time for that right now. Like I yeah. just, I don't. So, um, that's also like the, the biggest thing is just, I can't yeah. stretch myself anymore because then I will become truly a bridezilla just yeah. because <laughs> well everything it's, it's, that he does will make me annoyed and yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. here's the About, thing yeah i feel for you because we have a a little bit of a similarity in that you know you're pageant girl and you're show girl and like you like the moment you like the dress and the mm -hmm. hair and like you like the princess moment and at the same time I definitely have the imposter of like, I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. Like I've driven in the car on the 405. I've practiced my wedding vows so many times. I know when I get up there, I'm going to feel a certain way. Yeah. And like, you don't because no. you're just like, mm -hmm. you're waiting until you feel something. And you're like, I never feel anything. I feel something when I'm watching the bear on my couch and like Count and Crows starts no, playing. I feel something like more two, at other people's weddings than 100%, I did at mine. A hundred percent. And so gosh, yeah. I, I'm divorced or I was divorced. <laughs> now I'm married. But I had two weddings. I had the big ballroom, fancy dress, everyone's on their best behavior wedding when I was young. And I hated it. I hated it the day I was doing it. I hated it. I hated it. So when it came time to actually marry the love of my life, the person that I knew was my person, we got married in the fucking backyard. I had a taco truck on the driveway. We did nothing that you had to do. There was no favor. We did an evite. It was like the most chill thing, but I got 
beautiful pictures of me in my beautiful dress and beautiful pictures of us that I still have at our house. And we did our vows and the vows are the only thing that matters. Jack had a similar experience at her wedding. We're in in France, in the middle of the world, and like all of these things you want right, and what does everyone talk about? Just the vows. So really, Hannah, like you can you can do whatever you want. You don't have mm-hmm. to have your family there. You can elope and do all the beautiful photos and do your vows with just you and your husband because if that's what's gonna make you feel comfortable, and then you can go down. Like for me, I worked in Hollywood at the time when we got married, I was, I think I was hosting on the insider. And so I had all these people that like Hollywood people that were like my people, like agents and you know, whatever. And people I worked with at the TV show and all this stuff. I was like, I can't have these people around me when I'm trying to be like just regular me. So in the backyard, we had 40 people and it was like no work friends on either side. And then two weeks later, we threw a Gatsby party at like a club in LA and like every person that was like a work person, an acquaintance, a person that wanted to celebrate you. Like we did a big party and everyone came and there's a great photo booth and we drank and it was like so fun. And like, sure. Did people talk shit about me behind my back being like, I can't believe Kilty didn't invite me to wedding. Sure. But I didn't care. And so you just have to like, what I love and how I know you're going to have a successful marriage is that you're so self-aware and you're already in therapy and he already understands that like he understands you. Yeah. yeah. And like, so that's the math, the, the the missing piece or the piece that's so important in a marriage is that like, he knows your nutto bananas and like, he's going to help you and understand you and, and be a part of a life with you. That's going to have some nutto bananas parts in it. And like, Mm -hmm. that's the most important thing because most women, what happens is they hide that and they act like everything's fine. And then they have their wedding day and they're in tears in the bathroom because nothing's going the way that it is. And then the wedding ends and you're like, all I had was this wedding. And then the relationship falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I feel so supported by him. And also what was really cool was, you know, you're asking like, how did I feel after the fact that he could take ownership of also like where some of his patterns came in through it of like, he is, can be a people pleaser and didn't want to, you know, ruin everybody else's weekend that it spent all the time and money. And he's like, maybe I could have listened. Like He's like, I'm so glad that we did it. And I feel like as soon as the engagement was like uh, over, like I said, that weekend, I was able to like really relax into it. But he's like, you know, I, I probably didn't hear you fully. And I like, and he took responsibility for that. And that's honestly all I needed. Cause it's like, it's not that I'm mad that you proposed to me yeah. or like, I wanted to say no, like that's none of that, but to be able to be aware of our patterns and, and already like being able to have that communication is so great. And so I want that the wedding to really be a reflection of us. And, you know, it, it's been, it's been interesting, like even trying to start planning the wedding. It's like, at first he was like, Oh, I want a I want a big wedding, but I'm like, you want a big wedding or, or you want a wedding here in a big wedding because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Yeah. Right. And he's like you're right. Like that yeah. is why I'm like, but what do you, what do we actually want? What do you really want? What yeah. do you because want? I could see that yourself. too. I'm like, I want, you know, the most extreme experience for everyone. And then it's like, oh, well, okay, I'm seeing what I'm doing. I'm trying to make it this like... For everyone else. For everyone else too. What do you want? Yeah. And and so we're both seeing the ways that we're doing that. We're like, I'm like trying to make it this like extravagant thing, but like over... Which I still think destination is what I want to do, but it doesn't have to be Destination will weed the people out. (laughs) Yes. It'll weed the people out. But it still doesn't have to be this like extreme thing that sometimes I'm look, I don't want to spend a million dollars on my wedding. And I'll I'll I will compare what I want to people who do that. And it's like that's so dumb. That's that's dumb for me at this point in my life. Yeah. You know, so um we're we're just taking this time to really set up ourselves for a marriage, not just the wedding. And I think that's that's important. And at the end of the day, the wedding literally doesn't matter. Like it's, it kind of does. I mean, I it's like really cute. And I mean, obviously same because I obsessed about mine for a year, like all yeah. everywhere. But like at the end of the day, it's like it, it ends up coming and going so fast. And then like Kelsey was saying, like, if you're just putting, I mean, I put too much pressure on my wedding, I'm talking to myself, but like, 
there's so much pressure to make everybody else happy and make the experience for everybody else. That's what ended up spiraling me after our wedding is just mm-hmm. worrying about if everybody was having fun. Did I do enough here for, for everybody else? Like, how do they feel about me? But at the end of the day, like Kelty said, like the things that I took away from the wedding that were the most important to me were doing our vows, which I was going to do privately and Kelty and Becca bullied me. They're like, you do this publicly. <laughs> everybody wants to see your love and experience it because you know you only experience so much of a couple and then like my first look with my dad and my first look with jared and like those things are just Mm. me and jared it didn't have anything to do with anybody else you know yeah so keeping that in mind i think is just because you can get carried away yeah it's gonna be amazing i just love having these types of conversations because sometimes you know you see the the pictures and you feel like you're so alone of feeling like a little bit crazy town about it all or it not being, you know, 100% the most magical experience through and through. Like, I'm sure there's, you know, I I hope that there are those like precious moments where, you know, Adam, my dad, see me for the first time and vows and all that. Like, I, I, I really hope for those moments, but that it's okay to have some anxiety about making a huge decision in your life. It doesn't have to be like, oh my gosh, I've just never felt better in my life. Like knowing I'm making the perfect decision for me. It was just like, no, like I have relationship anxiety. I've had some really up relationship (laughs) things happen. And even though I'm with like the most perfect person um, for me, that doesn't mean that those feelings can't coexist with also being really happy too and knowing that I'm making a great decision and choice for the rest of my life, I can still have a little bit of fear and that's okay. That doesn't mean like I'm making a a bad decision. Oh my God. Like three weeks before we got married, I was like, I'm not marrying Chris and we were in therapy. And I was like, are these, (laughs) I literally wrote about it in one of our books. And I was like, I'm looking at him. I'm like, are these the toenails I'm going to sleep beside every, (laughs) like it's totally, it's so normal. All right. We got to take a break. When we come back, we need to talk about the book. You're listening to The Lady Gang. Okay, we're back with Hannah. Now, I am very excited that you have pivoted from kind of self-help and memoir-ish into these novels because this is, A, as a Kelty, the smartest business decision of your life because now you can just go and write books all over the world and live in a hut and release amazing best-selling books. And second of all, you now get to write a little bit of a steaminess. So the book mm. comes out in April next year. So we're pre-ordering it now, right? It comes out May 7th. May 7th. Tell yep. me how you got the idea. What is it about? Are we getting sex scenes? Like what's the vibe? <laughs> First off, yes, we are getting sex scenes. Um, I always have been a big reader um, and I love a good rom-com. You know, something mm-hmm. that just kind of takes me out of my life and all the pressure and stress usually that's unnecessary that I put on myself. And so just Mm -hmm. to have something that I can escape into. And it's not that it's always like, it's kind of predictable, you know, when you have a rom-com, there's going to be some type of love story at the end. Uh, I think everyone kind of, if you read those books, that's what, that's what you love. Um, So this was always something that I, before everything in my life happened, I always said like, one day I think it'd be really cool to write a novel. Like that was just like one of those dreams that I had, not knowing where my life would take me. I didn't know somebody would want to read about my own life. Like, yeah, I didn't, I never really thought about that, but being able to write and create this own story and this own world was always something interesting to me. And so when this opportunity came up, I was like, Oh my gosh, like this is actually a dream like that I would, I would love to, to do. So um, I feel like people also 
started following me and, and know me for like the romance in my life. So to be able to pivot from not my my own love story, but to create other love stories with some of my own stuff sprinkled in like that. I think you draw inspiration from your own life. So it's definitely in there. But to create these different stories has been just so fun. And look, I've I've um, never done this before. So I also want to be very open. Like I had help, somebody helping me make sure that all my visions, thoughts, um, sentence structure made sense <laughs> <laughs> and could really like put together um, everything that I had in mind for the story into like great detail onto the page. And so I'm really thankful for um, Emily Larrabee that, that helped me with this. And just, I think it is, I really think it's awesome. <laughs> like, it's hard for me to be proud of myself with certain things. Um, but I'm really proud of this project and that feels good to say. So it's okay. called Mistakes We Never Made. Are, is okay. this like, what's the vibe of the overall don't give anything away obviously but the mm -hmm. vibe of the story and then like is it giving us like a coho moment like is it giving mm -hmm. us like a colleen hoover or is this like a diff is this like a danielle Steele situation or is this like a reese it's Witherspoon like emily book? henry situation oh we love emily henry we love emily henry like the it is the quintessential summer read it it has like enemies to lovers um, it's in a beach setting going down the coast that turns into a road trip trying to chase a bride, um, a runaway bride. Um, Fun. Love it. And these, uh, Emma and Finn were kind of, they had a lot of moments where they almost, almost were something and then not, which turned to like having. Which is the best in a book. Yes. Ugh. Which, which turns into them having a lot of friction and kind of. Uh, annoyed by each other and then they get stuck together trying to find their mutual best friend who is the bride and along the way you know it, it gets a little steamy and <gasps> I I really wanted there to obviously like everybody loves a good scene that makes them blush but it had to be it had to make sense and it wasn't like we go straight into like some crazy sex scene you know, there's a build up to it, which I also think is fun of like, yeah, oh, is something going to happen? And then uh, it, it doesn't. But I, I feel like it really is the quintessential beach read. It has everything that makes um, up what we love about rom-coms. But the thing that I, I love about it most is there's also this like group of girlfriends called the core four that kind of... Um, and I, I also have another book that's coming out where like all their lives are intertwined. And I love that. So it kind of gives like the sisterhood of the traveling pants vibe to it, which I love. Yeah. Um, and shows female friendships and how we show up for each other in these times when it comes to stupid boys and making mistakes and making decisions that kind of will change our lives and how we show up for each other. So that's also something that I... I thought was important because that's a love story in itself as well. How we, we love our friends. Okay. If they turned these books into movies, would you star in the movie? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, that's the goal. I, I wrote this book with that in mind of Amazing. like, I think it could, of it being produced into something, a TV show movie. Um, that is the goal. Oh, I don't know if I would, I would want somebody, I know I want like the best in it. And I wouldn't say that I'm the best at acting. I've, I've never really tried that, but can I be an extra? Absolutely. Oh yeah. You got to do the, um, Alfred Hitchcock. He'd always like show up in every one of his movies. Yeah, no, I definitely want to be, I, I want to see myself on camera. <laughs> Don't but we all? I, I would like somebody probably a little bit more believable and, you know, has some skill, um, playing these, these roles and these characters. Okay, I last thing before we go, because we're almost out of time, is um, for Jack Vanek and all the Bachelor fans out there, are you watching Golden Bachelor? Have you had time to watch it? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I just caught up this, I think, Sunday. Yes, I love it so much. What are y'all's thoughts? Because I think it's wonderful. It's kind of cheesy, but I, I actually Ugh. love that. No, we need it. Like, we need yes. Gary. I can't believe he's a real person. Because I'm like, how do how does somebody act and talk and is like so genuine the way know, that he is? Like, and that's I guess that's my fear. It's like, how are they gonna replicate that for like another golden bachelor? Because he just is a gem. 
and is so caring and truly like cares about every conversation he has with these ladies and is so optimistic. And I'm like, how are we going I think to- they could do 10 golden bachelorettes because I think women like yes. that's the exact same thing that happened in the regular franchise is like there were so many good women that you fell in love with. And then there were the men were like, eh. and in but- between you would no. know. No, we had talked about this where all they need, because we're like, it would be amazing, obviously, Golden Bachelorette. And then, mm-hmm. but it's like, how do you get so many good men? It's like, you only exact need, is the men. But you only need the a couple. Men. You only need a couple. And then the rest of them can be douchebags because like men, I don't care how old you are. Men are douchebags for the most part. Yes. But like, I feel like they could do it. Maybe n- nobody's going to be like Gary. It was the best casting I've ever seen in my life. Because he doesn't seem like, like, I feel like when we're, you're getting into that age you're kind of set in your ways and a lot of men like stop taking care of themselves and it seems like he's so open for this next adventure and he just seems like like a rare find yeah um so it's like him and who's the guy we had from jury duty on ronald oh ronald and jerry ronald is a yes they're the same on it's the year of like it's the year of good guys yes he's like he's everything that you could want to like everything you would expect him to be he's just like the sweetest but that is that is very do you have a um person uh, one of the women that you think he should be with because i can't quite decide who i think he's i can't tell who he's into the most i know because he he cares for all of them well, I am notorious for lurking the Bachelor subreddit all the time. So, so you know. I know, but I think they're all great. They're all great. They're all like, they Are you cast happy? the women. Are you yes. happy with who's yeah. with? Yeah. Oh, I know. Good choice. I, I, I don't want to know. Mm, now, oh, gosh, because I see. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. So we're happy. At least we're happy about it. Yeah. I um, hope they're together. I will. My heart will break if he doesn't have his happy ending. I know. I mean, I wonder how different it is when it comes when you're that when you're, you're that much older. Because like, I don't feel like social media is probably bothering them as much as, or maybe it is. I don't know. Because um, I, I feel so. like that kind of can get yeah, make dark. it so hard. Um, People aren't as mean to them as I feel no, like they're because they're adorable. You guys, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Hannah, we never got to the ask the lady game question. So you'll have to come back because we, we just, oh, no. we went, okay. no, it's great. I, but we have so many girls that want ad, our life advice. Cause we're obviously like crushing. Um, so <laughs> yeah. if, yeah. if yeah. you have crushing, totally. you know, mental breakdowns, not being able to do life Same is fine. Girl. But yeah, <laughs> it's totally fine. If you want more Hannah, you can listen to her podcast every single week. Um, it's called better tomorrow. And I am going to link you an episode that I was recently on and we had like the best conversation ever. And right now, as you guys know, we've talked about this for years about books and pre-orders. The only thing in life that matters is a pre-order. So hop on the internet, pre-order mistakes we never made. Let's let Hannah get her dream of making this book a success into a rom-com and it will star me allegedly because there is an opening. <laughs> um, and I would love that. I that can't wait. And uh, we will see, see you, you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my God, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. So I love to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social at Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday.